Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. It's the CBS All Access original series, Star Trek Picard, season one, episode four, entitled Absolute Candor. What an amazing episode. For all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. I'll do an entire recap of the entire episode, scene by scene, with pictures offset to the side, and I put my review of the episode in the comments. That's all coming up next. It's Bunny! The opening scene takes us to Planet Vashti, a Romulan relocation hub 14 years ago. So we see that in all of the episodes so far, it allows us to see certain events before the catastrophe on Mars. We see that Romulan are on the planet, they're playing cards, they're walking around, they're buying things on the market, and everyone seems like they're settled, calm, and at least trying to make this new place some sort Sort of home. We then see Picard being down and everyone seems to circle around him, letting the audience know that they trust him and that they hang on every word of what is coming up next. Picard addresses the audience and says, I know you're worried about this new settlement, but I reassure you that Starfleet will get this taken care of. And people seem assured, they seem relaxed as they slowly walk away. And they, we see a young boy admirer watch him as he talks to the people. And he rushes home in excitement to tell his mother, he's here, he's here. Picard enters the family's home and the mother says to the young boy, you've done nothing but talk about Admiral Picard since he's been gone. Now that he's here, make sure that you make yourself known and speak. And they share a moment of Romulan greetings. And of course, like a kid, he asks Picard, what did you bring me? Picard is happy to tell the young boy that I have the Three Musketeers by Alexander Numa, and the boy runs to him with excitement, hugs him, and the mother says, whoa, <laughs> you're embarrassing and you're making Picard feel very uncomfortable. He's not too keen of children and he doesn't like public displays of emotion. And the child is confused about why Picard doesn't like kids. And she lets him know that Picard thinks that children are distractions and they d take us away from our work and our pleasures. And the child says very quaintly, well, you've hurt my feelings because I thought that you were keen of me. I thought that you liked me. And Picard says, you know, basically like, whoa, let's clear this up right now. I like you very much. And he has this smile of, he likes me kind of energy. So it's a very heartwarming situation. And the mother tells him that, I know that you come and you go and you get reports of what's going on, but we wanna let you know that we're very thankful of all of the work that's been going on concerning this mission. And the young boy, of course, like a child, is saying different things during their conversations of what is he doing and can you read to me and interrupting here and there. And the mother just kind of ignores those statements. And the young boy says, well, Picard, last time you, you, you promised that you would read. And the mother says, whoa, whoa, whoa. Promises are prisons. And Picard tells the mother, well, last time I was here, I promised you that I would bring you sweet honey fat, but since you're saying promises are prisons, I guess I'll take it back. And she's just like, whoa, you know, no, whoa, whoa, I'll take that. <laughs> we learned that Elnor, the young boy, and Zoni is not his mother, but he has been placed in that situation for safety. And Picard lets her know that over time, maybe he'll loosen up and be into those moments where he can enjoy and become absolute candor. But he says, you know, Elnor, he must feel very uneasy and lonely at times because he's in a house full of women. And she says, you know, we love him so much. We're glad that he's here, but of course he doesn't belong to us. And he needs to be in a situation to where he feels more comfortable. Picard agrees and says that he'll do whatever he can 
man to continue to make sure that he gets placed in a better situation. So over a period of time, a short span of time, we do see scenes where Picard and the young boy are spending time together. Picard is teaching him fencing. He's reading the book to him. And the boy gets so comfortable that he admires Picard so much, so much so that he leans his head on his shoulder during a time of book reading. One day while they're fencing, Picard receives a message from Rafi telling him about the attack on Mars. So it gives us an idea of where Picard was. So it's letting us know where certain individuals were and what happened during the catastrophe that happened on Mars. So he lets everybody know that unfortunately he has to go. There are things that he must update himself on. There's a lot going on and they're worried. They're asking Picard, will this affect the mission? And once again, Picard gives his word and promises that he'll be back. Everything should remain steady and that the mission will continue. After this, this scene, we see the opening credits for the show. Agnes joins Rios for a little chit chat and she notices that he's reading a book. And as she approaches the area, she goes, you know what? All these thoughts I had about space. And now that I'm here, I'm realizing that space is really boring. I had more fun doing research. And you're sitting here and you're reading a paper book. What what are you reading about anyway? And he lets her know that this is a book about the pain and the consciousness of always thinking about death and what humans have to deal with. And she's like, oh, that's that's really exciting. You know, somebody that I cared for once upon a time used to read those paper books all the time and I would get on their nerves asking them questions every five minutes, but they learned how to deal. And Rios is just like, wow, like, how did they deal? In other words, you know, how did they uh, get along with you being so annoying? And she says, you know, my father used to read those paper books. So since he's my dad, he learned how to deal. And all of a sudden we hear Rafi coming into the room and she's like, oh, thank goodness. Someone who can change the subject here. And Rafi is saying to him, to, to Rios, like, hey, I checked the navigation and we're going a different way. Where are we going? And he lets her know that Picard wants to go to Planet Boshni and she's not too impressed and has this lean like, oh, we're changing course because Picard saying that we're changing course, but we need to stay focused. The hospitality hologram confirms with Picard because he wants his quarters to replicate his vineyard study. So Picard likes everything that he sees, everything is to his liking. And as he's reviewing all of that, we see Rios and Rafi enter the room. And Rafi is just like, wow, this, this looks really good, it's great. But you've changed the nav navigation and I wanna know why you're going to this planet. Why are you going back? And Picard says, look, I know that you're eager to find the sister of Dodge. I know that you want to find all of these things, but there's just a lot of things I need to go back to on this planet and that I need to just close the book on. And as he's explaining that, then we have Agnes that walks in and is like, is there, is this a meeting that's going on? Was I not invited? And Picard's just like, come in. This isn't a private meeting. We were just, just talking, but since you're here, go ahead and come in. We are talking. So make yourself comfortable. Rafi asked Rios, okay, so Picard wanted to change this course of navigation, but did you tell him about all of the changes that have happened on that planet? It's not the same. It's not this, this same energy of when Picard last left. And he's like, look, I thought Picard knew about everything. You got this Romulan rebirth movement. You got the Rangers that can't keep up with all of the chaos that's happening on the planet. I thought he knew. I thought he knew about all that. And she's like, mm, clearly not, because he's going in blind about how it's changed. Rafi says, 
Picard, he's trying to get an assassin. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to go to this planet and get an assassin. And Picard says the Malads are not assassins. They choose what they fight for and then they have to select that person. So it's not something that we could just hire them to do. And Rio says, well, okay, even if we go here and you ask the question, what makes you think that they're gonna help us? And Picard says, they helped me a while ago and they helped us relocate a lot of the refugees. And I think that they will help us based on absolute candor. And Agnes is just like absolute candor. What is that? And he's just like, it's the moment of raw emotion and they don't water it down. They don't filter it. And I feel that if I bring that and the honesty and what we need them for, then they maybe they might help us. And he believes that this is true. And he goes to the window deep in thought and Picard takes a deep breath. And Rafi says, Picard, I understand why you're doing this and why you think that it's important and why you think that they may need to be on our side. But remember what we used to say. Do you remember what we used to say? And Picard just says, yes, one impossible thing at a time. She says, yes, one impossible thing at a time. And remember our main mission, our main focus, free cloud. We've got to get to that. And Picard looks at her deep into her eyes and says, I don't know when I'll ever get to come back here. And just from that emotion, she takes in consideration his experience, his age, everything that's going on. And without saying any words, we can see the emotion on her face that she gets why we have to make this pit stop and why we have to go to this planet. At the research site, Soji is looking at playback of interviews that Ramda has where she goes into her explainings of how her ancestors describe the day of annihilation and how that means and how that's translated into the destroyer. Rios and Rafi, they do research to try to figure out, okay, how are we gonna get into this planet? We've gotta research their security nets. We gotta think about how we're gonna ask for access. And Picard says, well, did you mention that it was me, that it was Picard? And she's like, well, yeah, that didn't help. You know, mentioning your name didn't help. So we gotta think of alternate ways to get onto this planet. After they figure that out, Picard gets down to the planet and he observes everything and he notices the quiet and the division and people really not talking to one another and how things are separate. And he sees the Romulan only sign in a particular area and he waves to everyone and says hello in their native tongue. But they look at him like, you know, we don't know you. And it quickly reminded me of a scene from the show Martin, where Martin went into an unemployment office and he thought everybody knew who he was. My fans may recognize me. <laughs> Don't nobody know you, honey? <laughs> they know me, Myra. Everybody uh -uh. knows me. Uh -uh. You don't believe me? <laughs> well, watch where I'm going, man. Huh? What's up? <laughs> I say, what's up? <laughs> I say, what's up? <laughs> man, sit your ass down. <laughs> Soji back at the research site, she doesn't know why she's so drawn to Ramda and she's observing her in her comatose-esque state and Narek walks in. And when she looks at him, it's kind of this confused, puzzled, I don't know what to think about you sort of look. And she tells Narek, you know, out of everything, I have this connection with her and I can't explain why. When she looked at me, I know it sounds weird, but I felt like I was seen. And, you know, we had a negative experience in the first encounter, but I feel like it's a connection somewhere. And Narek said, let's, let's just go somewhere else so we can just talk more into detail about it. And Soji looks at Narek and says, how did you know that I would be there? Like, how did you know I would be in this, the disordered ward? And he's just like, well, I don't know. I just, you know, thought you were in there. And she 
seems doubtful of his answer. She says, you knew that I would be there. I'm in the ward. How did you know I would be there? You're saying that you don't know, but you appear to pop up wherever I am. You don't need clearance to restricted areas. You don't need permission for access. Have you been following me? And since you know everything, I can make a guess that you know everything. What happened on Ramda's ship? And he assures to her, you know, I, I don't know. They share a fun moment on the ship, kind of hopping around, sliding around in a certain area. And she lets him know that I'm gaining all of this information and I don't know how, and I'm fluent in Romulan and I'm speaking in it, and he's even impressed. So we see this moment of, wow, like you know all of these things, and I think it's just so wonderful. And they share a kiss, but we start to see the wheels churning in Soji's brain, and her really not taking him seriously and that there could be something wrong. So we are seeing her thought process change just a little bit when it comes to Narc. Picard has been ID'd and that's confirmed for from Rafi. And she says, you've been ID'd, we've gotta go. And he tells her, okay, if there are any dangers, you have to deal with that. The team has to deal with that. I still have a lot that I need to know. There are things that I still need to handle while I'm here. So I'm out, don't interrupt me again. I'm gonna take care of this. You, you gonna, you're gonna take care of that. And he continues to talk to Zoni and he's expressing that, I'm really disappointed how things turned out and the division and the energy. And she confirms that, Picard, you did what you could. There's only so much that you can do. And when things evolve and change, it's out of your hands. But we're appreciative of what you tried to do. And it's not your fault that the mission took a turn. And he lets her know, like, I know I asked for something last time and you guys assisted us when it came to the refugees and that last mission, but I'm just, it hurts me to say, I need your help again. And I need someone to go along with me on this mission. And she tells him that, you know, that's, that's great. That's good. But we might want to consider maybe another person that has skills and Elnor he might want to be engaged in this mission. He tells her, you know, that would be great. And he's probably still mad at me because I know that I gave this confirmation that I would make sure that he got settled somewhere else and that never happened and he's still here. And she tells him that I understand that he's been here and that there are dangers and he might die on this mission, but knowing that he'll leave with you or there's a possibility that he may leave with you gives me peace that he can start to live. Picard goes to Elnor and says, I know you're upset with me about everything, but I really need to, to speak with you. I need to know if you will go with us on this mission, but I don't know if there's a ritual. I don't know if I'm supposed to kneel. I, am I doing this right? What do I do to speak with you and, and, and ask of your services? And he tells him, you sit, you talk, and I'll listen. I'll need to understand why you're going on the mission and what's gonna happen. So he updates him about data and everything between the synthetic that he saw. So he updates him on all that information. And I'm, he's like, I know it's a lot. I know it probably doesn't make sense. And he says, no, I remember when I was younger that you used to speak about data, but he's really upset. And he says, you know, you left me here. You told me that you would take me to another place. You told me all of these things would happen. And he says, no, I just, I can't. And he walks off because he's upset and he has every right to be. Picard leaves and just knows that that's his answer. He doesn't want to go with him on this mission. And Picard, you know, he also let him know that I need you too because I'm, I'm older, I'm old and I can't fight the way that you fight. And you know, Zoni t tells me that you finished your training, but with all of that, he still declines and he starts his journey to leave. And as he's leaving, he sees that there's this Romulan only sign. He tears it down. He walks on it. He goes to the eatery area and he says hello once again and he requests a, a waitress. 
And everybody kind of has this look like, what is he doing? He's sitting by us, but this is Romulan only. Who is this guy? And one of the gentlemen actually recognizes him and said, you might not recognize me, but at one point I was a senator, believe it or not. And I remember when you came here a while ago and you got us all riled up and you told us about all of these promises and things that you would do. And we believed you. We had faith in your mission that you would get things done. But look where we are now. And he demands that Picard take out his sword and fight him. But Picard doesn't want to fight him. He doesn't want to do this. But the guy insists that you're going to fight, throws him a sword and everything. And as he proceeds to fight, we do see Elnor pop up and he says, you know, basically stop what you're doing. And I would advise you to choose life. And you know, if somebody tells you that, they pretty much got it all in the bag that I know that I could whoop your butt at this point. The guy proceeds to fight El Elnor and has no luck and he decapitates him and cuts his head off. And he makes an announcement to everybody around him. I am committed to Picard and anybody that threatens him in any kind of way will choose death. And by this time, we have a crowd starting to circulate around them to where they're outnumbered and, numbered, and you hear Picard give the signal to, to Rafi like, now, like beam us up now, it's time to go. Like we, we, got, <laughs> we gotta get up out of here. They beam up to the ship and Picard is very angry, but he tries to keep his calm and tell him that man did not have to die. I know we were in a situation, but you didn't have to kill him. And he tells him like, I was just trying to defend you. And Picard says, I understand you were trying to defend me, but the way I roll this mission, that is not the first resort. You've got to swear to me and you've got to promise me right now that when situations like that happen, I will tell you when it is time to fight. I will tell you when it is necessary that we have to go to those lengths. Do you swear to me that next time you'll listen to me? He swears. They share a moment where they speak to each other via Romulan ritual and they move on and they accept that that happened but Picard is like let's not do that again. Rizzo visits Narek and says you know what's the update what information can you give me you seem like you're very relaxed and what information that you do get it's really not helping us what have you done so far and it better be good news and you better not fall into being pretty much just like you don't know what's going on and you're acting like you don't know what's going on because you're taking a liking to this girl and Nara tells her you know I'm not taking my time I'm really trying to find out information but if I push too hard she may activate and that's not what we want because when the last one activated you see what happened but then he says something something interesting he says you know why did they go mad and what did happen to their ship? So he's curious as well. And he admits that the things that he's telling, the things that she's telling him does make sense. Why did certain things happen? And she tells him, look, you have a week to give me what I need or it will be in my hands and we will do what I want to do to take care of the situation. So pull it together. She chokes him and demands, what is her name? Who is she? And in a chokehold, he says, she's the destroyer. So she has that bit of information that we know. We have everybody on the ship, Picard, Rios, Rafi, Agnes, and now we have El Elnor, and they are trying to get out of there because it is people in a ship trying to attack them and get them as they're leaving this planet, and they're not having any, any luck. They're trying to speed off, they're trying to do the best that they can, but then they quickly notice it's somebody helping them and that they're shooting at the attackers and they are a really good pilot and Rio says that's a really good pilot I don't know who that is but they are really kicking butt they're shooting from the left they're shooting from the right they're out swaying the attacker and they are really doing some damage and as they're doing that that other ship does a good job in destroying the other ship but they notice that the defense shields on this mystery ship is going down and now they're at risk of falling into the security net of the planet. It's getting closer and closer and Picard says, oh, we got to And he remembers he's not the captain, steps back, looks at Rios and Rios says, hey, open it up. Let's let that person in so they can get into some safety. He opens it up, opens up the portal. 
the ship crashes into the net and they beam the person down just in time for them to get on the ship and who it is it? It is seven of nine. And Picard is looking like seven of nine. She looks at him and says, Picard, you owe me a ship. Ah! Hold up. Oh, we them boys. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm like, it's seven of nine. I hope that you enjoyed the recap of this episode because I know I enjoyed doing it for you. Please make sure to check out my reviews and estimates for the rest of the season in the comments and also subscribe to my channel. I don't know if you noticed, but I subscribe to whomever subscribes to me. Also follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, official bun underscore E. Check out the playlist for other awesome shows and stay tuned for more shows to come. Have a good one and I'll see you next week for episode five. Bye. <laughs>